Star Wars 7x7 episode 1965 today. Is the Mandalorian force sensitive? I think it's entirely possible that it is and that he doesn't necessarily know it. And I'm going to talk about the evidence on today's episode. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod, and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode where we're going to talk about The Mandalorian, specifically the title character played by Pedro Pascal in the new Disney Plus streaming series. It's not just that Baby Yoda seems to have an affinity for The Mandalorian, right? I mean, there is that for sure, but there's one specific thing that The Mandalorian does in the first episode of the series that I think suggests he is Force-sensitive and may not necessarily know it. So we'll get to that, but just briefly first, a little bit about Mandalorian and Force users in general. They do exist, and you know, the whole thing about who gets Jedi powers and under what circumstances and, you know, whether it's hereditary or anything like that, well, shucks, we don't know a heck of a lot other than it has the potential to be hereditary because it certainly happens in the Skywalker lineage, for example, but... It seems like it's a comparatively rare thing to happen. It has happened in Mandalorian culture, which is more a culture than anything else. There's a guy named, here we go with pronunciations, Tar Vizsla, Vizsla, and this is the person who was the first Mandalorian inducted into the Jedi Order way back in the day. And is the one who, legend had it, created the Darksaber, which was a special black-bladed lightsaber that then became sort of the Excalibur of Mandalore. And that is a whole other story. But I'm mentioning it to flag the fact that it is possible and has been historically documented that Mandalorians can have Force powers. So that's that for a start. Now, I want you to cast your mind back to Attack of the Clones. And in particular, a scene in the Petronaki arena where all of those crazy creatures are running around and Newt Gunray is hoping <laughs> that they will kill all of our heroes and that he'll have Padme Amidala's head on his desk and all that stuff. But there's a scene very briefly in that crazy chaos where the Reek, and we talked about that creature yesterday or the day before, um... That giant sort of charging rhino -y looking thing with the horns and the tusks and whatnot. That thing is tamed using the force by Anakin Skywalker. There's a scene where like he's walking up to it and he's got his hands out and he's getting it to calm down and it's shaking its head like it's trying to you know, shake off a Jedi mind trick before he jumps on top of the thing and wraps the chain around it and then starts to ride it like a bucking bronco, right? Well... A similar scene happens in Chapter 1 of The Mandalorian. That's the scene where Nick Nolte's Ugnaught character is trying to get The Mandalorian to learn how to ride a blurg and says, you know, after a couple of failed attempts, you know, you're a Mandalorian, your ancestors tamed the great Mythosaur. And so then The Mandalorian takes one more shot at it and he's walking up to it and going, easy, easy. And you see the blurg start to kind of slow down and to relax and to be calmer and when the Mandalorian actually puts his hand on the Blurg, the Blurg's eyes close. It's the same kind of behavior and you don't see it as close up in Attack of the Clones with the way the Reek reacts to Anakin Skywalker approaching him and saying, you know, steady, steady, you know, or at least kind of having that attitude toward it. But it is very similar, and this is the thing that's making me think that the Mandalorian is Force-sensitive. As for whether the Mandalorian has any idea that he's Force-sensitive, well, I don't think so, and I think there's also something instructive about Anakin Skywalker's history that can shed some light on this topic as well, and I'll share that with you after the break. Stay tuned. 
Hey Rebel Razor, I've made some changes to the asteroid belt level at patreon.com slash SW7X7 and they are all with sponsors in mind. So if you want to get the word out about your business, your product, your service to a dedicated Star Wars audience, then please check out patreon.com slash SW7X7 and look for the asteroid belt level for details. Again, that's patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So I got to thinking about, you know, the question of whether anybody has any idea about the Jedi at this point. I mean, we're a few years out from the end of the Galactic Empire and, you know, the Jedi, like, they haven't been around and, you know, have kind of passed into myth and yes, maybe some word about Luke Skywalker has gotten out and about, but, you know, it's kind of unlikely, comparatively speaking, to be accepted as fact at this point. But I think back to The Phantom Menace and about how Qui-Gon Jinn was talking to Shmi Skywalker about Anakin's pod racing skills and that he sees things or senses that things are about to happen before they happen and that is what explains his quick reaction skills while pod racing and that it's a Jedi attribute and that's something that would have been identified, you know, if he had been, I guess, closer to the galactic core, basically. But it's a kind of a similar thing, potentially, with the Mandalorian. Like, why his particular fighting skills would be as good as they are, at least with... <laughs> <laughs> with sentient combatants, not with blurgs and uh, mudhorns or whatever that rhino bear thing was. But that scene in chapter two where he's walking through the canyon with baby Yoda and senses that something ain't right and there are Trandoshans that are you know, trying to move into position to attack him. Is that his own natural bounty hunting skill that's kicking in? Or is it aided by some sort of force sensitivity? Like he's getting a tingle that he can't explain, but it's not necessarily, you know, his bounty hunting instincts. It's something else entirely. Anyway, there you go. So I would love to hear what you think if you think that I am crazy for thinking that he might be force sensitive or if you think, oh, maybe this is a possibility. So let me know wherever you catch this show. And if it's a place where there are no comment sections, then by all means at SW7X7.com. For now, though, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the parsec you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.